Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome 3C family. We're so excited to have you joining us today. We know that you're going to have an incredible time in the Word of God. Whatever platform you're joining us from, whether it's Facebook Live, Periscope, YouTube, the 3C app, the 3C website, or now Channel 265, How TV at 10 a.m. We have an incredible service coming up with Pastors Bird and Shawnee Pretorius and a guest speaker, Pastor John Jenkins of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. A warm welcome to all of our My3C at Home sites, which are homes that are registered with us to receive resources to help them with their church at home experience. We're going to join 3C Live for praise and worship. Get ready to sing, dance and clap along with us.
That is one of my favorite worship songs because it really speaks to the heart of God. He is good to me and we are thankful today for the goodness of God. God is not the source of all of this darkness, this chaos, this confusion all around us right now. Let me reassure you that He is a good, good Father. I want to read one passage of scripture to you, just a few verses, and we're going to pray together today. And what God did for these men, God will do for us. Listen to this from the second book of Corinthians in chapter 1 verse 8. It says, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble that we went through in the province of Asia. Troubles are not something new to humanity, and troubles are not only limited to people who do not believe and serve God. All of us as human beings in the earth right now are subject and will suffer trouble in this world. But hear what they say about their troubles. They say we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure and we thought we would never live through it. And maybe that is how you feel right now about your situation. It is crushing you. It is overwhelming you. It is so severe that you don't know if you are going to live through it. Well, thank God that's not the last word on, on this passage right here, on this situation as recorded in the Word of God. But it goes on and he says, no, in fact, we expected to die. It became so dire. It became so dark. It became so destructive. We didn't expect to make it through. In actual fact, our expectation was one of death. And this morning, maybe when you look at your finances, when you look at your marriage, when you look at your body, maybe you've been infected with the virus, maybe someone is sick in your family in an ICU, and we have an expectation on a human level of death. I want to reassure you that what God did for them, God will do for us. Listen, it goes on, it says, but... As a result of everything that we are going through, we stopped relying on ourselves. And if that is the one thing that we get out of all of this, I pray that it will be so for every single person. That we will stop relying on our gifts, stop relying on our talents, stop relying on our education, stop relying on our natural and human ability to provide and protect but that we will start relying not 50% or 70%, but 100% on God. He says, so we learn to rely on God who raises the dead. And He did rescue us from mortal danger. And He will rescue us again. And so we place our confidence in Him because He continues to rescue us. He has rescued us. He's rescuing us now. And whatever the future may hold, He will rescue us again. He says, thank you for praying for us. This is how you helped us in this situation, in the crushing, in the overwhelming face of death that, that we found ourselves in. You helped us by praying for us. And then it ends and says, and many people will give thanks to God because He graciously hears and answers prayer. And today I'm going to pray with you. You may feel that pressure, that weight, the crushing, the overwhelming sense of death. And it may be a reality to you right now, but there is a truth that trumps that reality. If we put our faith in the Word of God, in the goodness of God today, He will do for you. He did it for them. He kept on doing it. And it was their story until the end of their lives. And now I want you just to there where you are, agree with me as we pray. Father, you are well aware of every pressure, of every anxiety, of every frustration and disappointment. You are aware of the destruction, Lord, and even the threat of death right now. Death of, of, of income, death of marriages, death of family, death in the body of people, sickness and disease and darkness all around. Yet you are the good, good Father. And knowing this, when we pray, the Bible says you will be gracious and merciful to answer our prayers, not just to listen and discard, but to 
on our behalf with your power, with your might, Lord, with the victory of Jesus Christ, our champion. You step now into every family, into every situation that they are facing. And for every household, we declare deliverance from death. We declare healing from sickness. We declare restoration where there is division and disharmony. We thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus secured for us a better covenant, better promises, and that they are ours, not because of our goodness, but as we just sang in worship, your goodness, your goodness, your goodness, your grace and your mercy now, Lord, for everyone under my voice in Jesus' name. And let it be for us as it was for them, as you delivered them, as you rescued them. Thank you that today you do it for the many multitudes that have listened now to this prayer and have received it in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you all the praise, our good, good Father. Amen and amen. I want you, if you have time, and we're going to continue the service now, it's going to be an incredible, incredible message, and it's going to be a witness and a testimony to what we just prayed. May it be a blessing to you. Thank you, Pastor Shanae, for such great ministry. I know you've been moved by the power of His Word and by the presence of His Holy Spirit. It's awesome to know that God is in control of our lives. Well, we're going to worship God in our giving. And I've been so moved in this last week to see the generosity of our 3C family. It's not just the giving of finances, but it's also the giving of time, Uh, people working day and night uh, to make sure that the gospel is preached, people working day and night to making sure that the poor are fed. You know what? My heart is moved. 3C family, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of to see what God has done in and through your life because as the word of God says, freely we have received and freely we give as well. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your giving of your resources and the giving of your time. And uh, later on, we're going to show you a little segment, a little clip of what we have been doing in the community. And I know you're going to be moved. But I want to challenge you to be faithful towards God and your tithe and your offering. Of course, we know that a tithe belongs to the Lord. A tithe of nothing is nothing. But you see, when God blesses you, we've got to be faithful in that which God has given us and make sure that we give to God that which is His. And also with the offering, I'm so excited to to see people faithful, even though we don't have the cash means, you know, to give unto the Lord, but people have been faithful in the giving of the offering. Every single meeting that we have, you know, contributing, making sure they give their part so that we can do all of this, that we can do uh, what we do to be able to make sure that the gospel is preached, uh, not just in South Africa, but through the whole of Africa. And it's made it, it's, it's made it possible. You know, that's why we can be on television. Uh, that's why, you know, we're already on a uh, Gau TV now on, 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 on channel uh, 265 as well, plus the streaming platforms. And you know what? You have made that possible. We really thank you and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Be faithful in your tithes, be faithful in your offerings. And you know what? I know God is going to multiply that to you as well. But I'm so excited because as a church, we decided, you know, my wife and I, we gave 100,000 rand and and as a church, we decided to give a million. But we have seen this multiply and we have been privileged to to partner with uh, the private sector and, of course, with government and with the political sector. And it's incredible to see what God has done, how it is multiplied. And you know what? Within this week and in the weeks to come, we're going to be giving 30,000 meals to people uh, worth to the tune of about 40 million rand. And you know what? That's the hand of God. Now, that's not money we, 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 we had, but you know what? One or two uh, companies stepped in that aren't even part of the ministry, that aren't even part of what we're doing. And you know what? They bought the food, they supplied the food, and we'll be able to go and touch uh, people's lives. We really, really appreciate. And therefore, I want, to, I want you to understand the principle because that 
That principle is critical. And this is what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. And you know, I love this scripture because it's exactly what it says. It says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. God wants to make sure you have an abundance, not just to eat, but you know, I have an abundance for every good work. In other words, God gives you enough seed to, to sow and he gives seed to eat. And that's what's so powerful about God's word. When he gives, God doesn't just give you enough to survive. God gives you enough to be able to sow. And what does God multiply? He multiplies the seed that you sow. And you say, well, well, Pastor Bird, I don't have an excess, but no one has an excess. No, no, nobody has excess. But the Bible teaches us in the book of Proverbs and in the book of Isaiah, he says that we need to share our bread with the hungry. And you've heard me say this before. It's when you've got a loaf of bread and you need a loaf for your family, you say, you know what? We're gonna sacrifice and we're gonna give of our bread. Let's give half a loaf away. If you've got a sandwich, let me give half a sandwich. Do you usually eat a whole sandwich? Yes. Do you need a whole sandwich? Yes. But you know what? I'm not gonna eat a whole sandwich. I'm gonna eat less and I'm gonna give away. You see, that's generosity. And you know what? I'm so moved to see the generosity of the 3C family that we've decided that with what we have, we will always sow. We will not lose that spirit of generosity. We will not have a spirit of fear. We will take what we have and we will share it. And you know what? As a church, that's what we've done. As a family, that's what we've done. We're sharing what we have. And look at what the Lord has done. The Lord has already multiplied the seed. And you know what? What He's done in our lives, He can do in your life as well. And therefore, I want to encourage you. Let's, let's, let's give. Let's share what we have. Um, yes, the giving of your time, volunteering, uh, we do need help, but also, you know, the sharing of resources. And that's why I want to challenge you, you know, to contribute to the COVID-19 relief fund. I want you to, 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 to make a decision, say, you know what, I can give a little bit. You, you know, it doesn't have to be much. Maybe somebody can give in the thousands or the hundreds of thousands or the millions. Maybe you can only give 50 rand. Maybe you can only give 20 rand. But you know what, give, give something. If you've got 20 rand, give away 10 rand. If you've got five rand, give away two rand. And therefore, it's not having an excess. It's always understanding. We've always got to be generous. We've always got to have a spirit of generosity and sow into people's lives. Now, next to me, you have the QR code. And if you take your phone and you just uh, point it at the screen um, and put on your camera, it will automatically take you to our donate page. And there you can uh, donate, you can donate, there you can give your tithes and your offerings, but also specifically, you can donate to the Makla Sheri uh, COVID-19 Relief Fund. You can donate there so that we can be a blessing to people's lives and uh, so that we can make the difference. So once again, if you don't, uh, if it doesn't work, if you point your phone and it's not working, just go to our website, www.my3c.tv. Just go to the website, Go to the donate page. There's a donate button. Just press the donate button and you know, it will take you to the donate page. And there are three easy ways in how you can donate and how you can give so that we can do all of this together. Together, we make a difference. And it's not a lot from one person, but every single person, just every person doing their little bit. That's all it is. All of us doing our little bit. And that brings about change and transformation within a nation. Come on, let's share. As a church, we're not selfish. We're not gonna just share with a 3C family. We're sharing beyond our family. We're helping other churches. We're helping other pastors. We're helping the community. Uh, we're helping even other religions. You know, this has got nothing to do with 3C family and 3C church. No, this is beyond us. We're taking what we have and we're sharing our resources with the community and with everybody around us. So let's keep that a spirit of generosity. Now, we've got a few video clips that we're going to look at. Uh, you're going to be blessed. And uh, 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 as we finish those video clips, we're going to get into the Word. And we've got uh, Pastor John Jenkins, a friend of mine. And uh, you're going to be so blessed by the Word that he brings. Got one of the largest churches in the United States of America. A great friend of mine for many, 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 many years. Got a heart for the community. You know, got a heart for Africa and South Africa. And he's going 
going to be sharing the Word of God. Are you ready to give? Log on to my3c.tv for cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT or the MasterPass option. My3c.tv cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. Director of Bit Food. We're a food business. We supply food service and hospitality with their, their food ingredients. COVID-19 decimated our business, much like it decimated most of the world. We lost 80% of our turnover overnight. We had the food, we had the distribution centers across the country, and we had 300 trucks. We went out looking for charities and government institutions that were feeding the vulnerable communities in South Africa. We found one partner being Telesure. We mobilized our teams and we packed, we packed 50,000 ration packs in 10 days and distributed them to vulnerable communities in Gauteng. afternoon out here in sunny Oliver Notes Boss in Centurion and we as the Masa City Foundation in partnership with Bid Foods have come to serve the community of South Africa during this national lockdown. So yes, the future does beam with hope and this is what we are bringing to the community of Oliver Notes Boss. We're standing here at Baltasi Sulu in Olivenot Bosch and we are busy with the, the handing out of food parcels to the entire community. Alright, so we're at the front of the line as you can see down here, social distancing. We're practicing it with Rafilwe and she's going to go through the entire process. As you can see, she's got her ID in her hand as well as the ticket. Let's see how that goes. So right now we're at the heart of the pickup line and as you can see behind me there is a production line going on and at this point specifically is where job creation is at its best. Alright, so this is the end of the journey for Ausrifilwe and uh, as you can see, she's with Stephen, the driver here and he's a high school student um, and he has offered his services to ensure that Ausrifilwe can get her parcel safely at home. Sure, I love you. I love you because I love you because I love you. Well, today we are here on this national public holiday and uh, we wanted to show you what's in the parcels that we are handing out to the community today.
So it is a whole lot of food going into this most desperate of communities, much, much needed right now, and we are super excited to be able to be a part of this. We are so thankful for everyone that has made this day possible, this time possible. To so all of our sponsors that continue to faithfully partner with us, we are really grateful. And all of our volunteers that are really doing this free of charge, that really just have a heart for the community. We are so thankful for all the hours that you have put in and the companies and corporates of South Africa as well. Thank you so much for helping us make a difference. The future really brings with hope. Especially mention of Bit Food, who packaged, who delivered, who, who really, this, which you see right here behind me, they are why we are able to be distributing this today. So massive thank you to them. With the help of the Department of Social Development, we, and we appreciate all the help, all the input, all the support. Here we are, and it's happening because of every single person that, that contributed, the political leaders, the community leaders, the police, the metro, and, and the government. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to every individual who, even if you gave 20 rand towards the COVID relief fund, of Makhla City. Because of you, we are here today. Makhla City Foundation COVID-19 Relief Fund. The future beams with hope. With the coronavirus infection rates on the rise in South Africa and around the world, we as a foundation have determined to assist impoverished communities without necessities. Partner with us in this worthy effort and spread the light of God during these dark days. Visit www.matlaseri.org and donate towards the purchase of necessities for these less fortunate in our communities. That's www.matlaseri.org. Mata City Foundation COVID-19 Relief Fund. The future beams with hope. Life is a journey. Everyone takes one small step to go to the next level. The journey is filled with moments of joy and others filled with pain. Sometimes we can get lost along the way. Life is not how many steps we take. It is the steps we take in the right direction. Today, decide to walk on the right path again. Life class is your opportunity to learn to walk with Jesus and fulfill his purpose for your life. This and much more is Life Class. Every Monday at 7 p.m. with Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius. Destiny Training is a program focused on shaping leaders by equipping them with the skills and tools necessary to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. Through years of experience and constant pursuit of excellence, we have been able to craft an accessible, effective learning process. With solid biblical foundations, Destiny Training prepares leaders to assume the responsibility of impacting not only their own homes, but every home in every community. Join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. with Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius for Destiny Training. Every believer, a leader of leaders. Our 3C app is now available. Download Community Character Courage on your app store. This app is just for you. Get all the latest articles, sermons, and audio or video formats, as well as connecting with us live. This app is just for you. 
That is community, character, courage, so you can take the gospel with you everywhere. 3C Live presents its fourth album, Good To Me, with songs like Perfect Love. First, Great Exchange. Three C Live's fourth release, "Good to Me," available on all digital platforms, including iTunes and Google Play Music. Welcome back, church. We're going to get into the Word of God, and I know you're going to be touched and encouraged. But just from my side, I want to say welcome to everybody that's connected to us. Uh, whether you're joining us by way of uh, our website, my3c.tv, uh, whether you're joining us via our 3C Church app, um, which you can get on Google Play or, or, or the Apple Store, uh, whether you're joining us via uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope Live, um, and then, of course, um, uh, if you're joining us via Gao TV on Channel 265 um, on the DSTV platform, no matter how you're connecting to us, we want to say welcome. It's so good to have you with us. I want to say a special welcome to the My3C at Home uh, sites. It's so good to have you with us. And um, I'm so excited to see how we've been increasing, increasing, increasing in numbers, close to 10,000 homes that we have registered. And um, I'm so glad that you could be part. And you might ask, what is My3C at Home? Well, that is a home that registers as a site. And we make sure that you get all the resources that you need to be able to have a great service conducive to your development and your growth and your walk with God. Because it doesn't just happen. There is a way to do it. And we want to make sure that your, your experience is maximized. And therefore, we want to encourage you to, to register your home as a My3C site. Now, if you don't have a leader or you're not connected to somebody within the church, all you have to do is go to our website, my3c.tv, and you just go to, um, you just go to uh, register My3C at home, and you go to that page, and you can register your site, and somebody will contact you so that they can help connect your home so that you can be part of the 3C family. So once again, uh, to everybody connected to My3C at home, good to have you with us, and everybody else that's with us, especially the the first time visitors, if you're with us for the very first time, so good to have you with us. I know God's going to do something special within your life. Now, we're going to get into the Word of God. And I asked a, a great friend of mine, Pastor John Jenkins. Uh, he's uh, got one of the largest churches in the United States of America. He's a, a humble man. He's a, he's a, I, I've known him for so, so many years. A humble man who's got such a love for people. He's got such a love for South Africa and a passion for South Africa. And I asked him, Pastor John, won't you minister the Word? And he said, yes, please. I would love to do that. And what we're going to do now is join Pastor John Jenkins as he ministers the word. Greetings to my brothers and sisters in South Africa. God bless you to my precious friends, Pastor Bert and Pastor Charnay, and to the whole 3C family. I love you. I'm sending you my love from the United States of America, from the, the, my offices at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I'm honored to be able to come and speak to you today. I wish I could be with you in person. I send you my love, my heart. I love you all so very, very much. And I'm grateful to God for the privilege and the opportunity to share with you what God has put on my heart. And uh, it's a message to the world. I wish I could get the whole world to hear this message. Um, but I'm going to start with my brothers and sisters at 3C in Pretoria, South Africa. God bless you all. I'm hoping that you're fine, that you're keeping safe, <clears throat> that you're doing all of the things to protect yourself from the COVID coronavirus. Will you take a moment and uh, pray with me as we begin to get it before we get into the word of God. Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness that you have extended to us, your mercy. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity, Father, to be a, a mouthpiece for your kingdom. And I pray that you would anoint this word 
to make impact, not just in America, not just in South Africa, but around the world. Allow your truth and of your word to preeminate, be preeminent in the lives of your people. And allow your name to get glorified. If they're unsaved persons, uh, backslidden, unsure persons viewing this message, God, let it penetrate their hearts. Let it penetrate the hearts of even believers. That, God, we might be everything you're calling for us to be. And we pray this today in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, I want to take a moment today and invite you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. And just walk with me through a multitude of verses. Isaiah has been given the assignment during his lifetime of prophesying to a portion of the nation of Israel. The kingdom of Israel is divided. Uh, And Isaiah has the assignment, the responsibility, and the call upon his life uh, to, to ministering to one portion of the divided kingdom called Judah. Judah is, a, is uh, a, uh, a portion of the tribe of Israel and carries the reputation and its very name means praise. It is the people who have the assignment of praising and glorifying God. And God speaks to them and speaks to us through the prophet Isaiah. He has the assignment of ministering to them And what he says in this 30th chapter is profound and powerful. Those of you who may understand the the way Isaiah is laid out in 66 chapters, the first 39 chapters would also uh, are the number of of, uh, Old Testament books of 39. Uh, Those first 39 chapters of Isaiah speaks to God's warning to the people of God. It It is God's uh, way and attempt to try to get a message over to the people of God that judgment's coming. And so that's the first 39 chapters. And the remaining 27 chapters, which, by the way, are the number of chapters in the New Testament, I'm sure you all know that already, uh, it gives hope that even in the midst of God's punishment, in the, the midst of God's uh, discipline to his people, that he always promises hope. But what I wanted to t- look at at this 30th Chapter, And I'm going to start just walking down and reading these verses and try to uh, put it in some structure and order so that we might hear what God is saying to us. And in the first 11 verses of chapter 30, he identifies a problem that Judah has. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look at this beginning at verse number one. Here's what Isaiah says. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord who take counsel, but not of me, and who devise plans, but not of my spirit. You see that? Did you see that? Here's a people who are rebellious to God. And he says, they're taking counsel, they're getting advice, they're making plans, but they haven't sought me, God says. They haven't looked to me. They haven't asked me. He says, "They, they take counsel, but not of me. And they devised plans, but not of my spirit. My spirit did not lead them to make the plans that they're making. He said, and they're doing it so that they may add sin to sin. That on top of what they're already doing, they can add more sin to it. To add sin to sin. Verse 2 says, who walk to go down to Egypt and, not have, and have not asked my advice. That's a significant point. He says, that they they walk to go down to Egypt. They want to go. Anytime you read Egypt in the scriptures, it represents the world. It represents the opposite of God. Egypt is a symbolic, it is a symbol of the world, the ways of the world, the counsel of the world. And he says they want to go down to Egypt and have not asked my advice that they should go down to Egypt. They want to be lined up with the world, but haven't asked me if it's okay. It says, it goes on to say, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Oh, that's a warning. It says they want their strength to be in the strength of their leaders, the strength of their presidents, their kings. And here the prophet is saying to them, therefore, verse 3, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. God is trying to give a strong warning that we're not to line up with Egypt. We're not to be lined up with the ways of the world. He says, in fact, 
You want to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You, you think that there's safety underneath the umbrella of Egypt. And you want to trust in their shadow. But he says this, it's going to turn out to be your shame. And it's going to end up being your humiliation. You're going to be embarrassed that you're under the shadow of Egypt. And that you're lined up underneath the authorities of a, of a country or a nation that has embarrassed you. We're embarrassed in these United States of America about some of these leaders of this country. It says in verse 4, for his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people who could not benefit them or be help or benefit, but a shame and also a reproach. Let's go to verse 8. Now go. Write it before them on a tablet and note it on a scroll that it may be for time to come forever and ever. He says, I'm about to tell you something and I want you to write it down. Don't slip it. Don't, don't slip it. Don't miss it. Write this down. Verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the, the law of the Lord. Verse 10, listen to verse 10, who say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Oh, that's profound. This is the warning from Isaiah. He says, I want you to write down what I'm about to say. I want these rebellious children, these lying children who won't hear what I'm trying to tell them, who won't listen to the law of the Lord, but they say to their preachers and prophets, don't prophesy to us the truth. Don't tell us what right, what's right. Instead, speak to us smooth things. Get out of the way, it says in verse 11. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Do you hear what they're saying? We don't want to hear from God. We don't want His truth. We don't want to hear what the Word of God has to say. And aren't there people in your circles and around you who don't want to hear what the Scripture is trying to tell us? God is trying to get our attention. And he says, it's a tragedy here today that you don't want to hear the prophecy of the Word of God. You want smooth things, right things. You want to hear that everything's going to be okay and everything's going to be all right. Therefore, verse 12, thus says the Holy One of Israel, since that's the posture you're going to take, nations... World, if you're going to turn your back on me, if that's, what, if that's the place you want to live, if that's the place you want to be, beginning at verse 12, he begins to give us some profound principles. 12, verses 12 through 19, he says this, Therefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you de despise this word and trust in oppression and perversity and rely on them, you know what? Some of you today have been living under oppression and being treated perversely. And the people over you take pride that they can rule and reign over you and control you and manipulate you. And because that's where you've put your trust and you've relied on them, verse 13, therefore, this iniquity shall be to you, to those who are putting their oppression and putting the perversity on others. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you like a breach ready to fall a bulge and a high wall whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant. God says, I'm going to bring a judgment on you that's going to come suddenly and quickly. It's going to catch you. It's going to come upon you and, and shock you. Verse 14, he shall break it like the breaking of the potter's vessel. Often in scriptures, God uses the analogy of a potter who's making a vessel. And sometimes when he's making that vessel and he gets to a place or a posture of, of unhappiness with, with the way the vessel is, he will smash it and start all over again. He will destroy it instantly. He'll smash it down, whop, and flatten it and say, I don't like what I see. I got to start over again. And he says, what's going to happen is the same thing. Your breaking comes suddenly in an instant, uh, and he shall break it like the breaking of the potter's vessel, which is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so there shall not be found among its fragments a shard to take fire from the hearth or to take water from the cistern. In other words, God says, 
I, I, sometimes I get to a point where I just have to utterly destroy everything that I've done. I have to start af- afresh, he says. Verse 15, thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. Listen to verse 15. This is his principle. He says, he says when you don't want to listen to me, I have to smash you and I have to start all over again. I'd like to take you on to your destiny, but you won't listen. You won't heed me. So I've got to destroy and start over again. But when he gets to verse 15, it says again, thus says the Holy One of Israel. Listen to what he says in verse 15. In returning in rest, you shall be saved. If you return to me, that's the call of God. Return. Come back to me. Return. That's God's call. Come back to me, he says. Return to my kingdom. Return to my word. In returning and resting in my power, my might, not leaning on Egypt, not depending on the world's standards, not going by what the world says you ought to do, but in fact, when you find the mindset and the heart and the mentality to come back to a God that doesn't make sense to the world, but it makes sense in the kingdom of God. Some of you understand that God's ways don't match up with the world's ways. The world says do everything you can to get up by pushing everybody else down. God's way says when you go down, he'll lift you up. The world's way says grab and keep. God's way says give and it shall be given unto you. The world's way says hate those who hate you, but God's way is love those that despitefully use you. When you return to me, he says, and rest in my ways, you shall be saved. Verse 15, your salvation is on the basis of you trusting and depending and returning and resting in God, resting in the Lord Jesus Christ. In quietness, verse 15, in confidence, that shall be your strength. But the problem is, he says, but you would not. There was a clear way for you to do it, but you would do it. This world has chosen not to listen to the voice of the Almighty God. I called you, but you wouldn't do it. But you said, verse 16, no, for we will flee on horses. We, we, we have a plan to get away. We, we will come up with a strategy to defeat what it is that's destroying us. We will, uh, we will, unfortunately, the mentality, we will flee on horses. But God says, therefore, you will flee and will ride on swift horses. Therefore, listen to this, those who pursue you shall be swift. You think you're getting away, but what's going to take you out is going to be even faster than what you can do. You will run on your horses, but what is pursuing you, what is destroying you, will pursue you swiftly. By the time we get down to verse 18 and 19, it says this, Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. You know what's great about God? He's a God that will be patient with us. He's waiting on us to come back to him. He's waiting for us to turn our hearts, and turn our minds, and turn our mentalities, and turn our focus, and turn our words, and turn our decisions to him. He says, he says in verse 18, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. He will be exalted in your eyes. He will be exalted in your mentality, in your ways. He'll be lifted up in your mindset and in your decisions. Verse 18 says, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. And when we exalt him, when we exalt the Lord Jesus, when we yield to the God of the universe, when we say yes to his word and yes to his ways, I'm so grateful that he's a God who will have mercy on us. How many of you know we need the mercy of Almighty God? We need God's mercy. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who, who wait for him. For the mercy, for the people, verse 19, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. That's great news, saints, that there's a God who's waiting, got his ear perched in our direction. He's leaning in our direction to hear and to see if we will make the change. 
if we will turn our hearts around, if we will go in a different direction, if we will put our hearts in the right place, he will hear and he will answer. That's a principle. Then he gives us a program, verse 20. Can I just, in this first part of verse 20, he tells us exactly what the program is. That there's a problem, there's a principle, now there's a program. Here's the program. Verse 20 says, the first part, and though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. <sighs> Let me make that plain. The Lord gives you, the Lord gives you the bread of adversity. The adversity that we're having in our lives, it says the Lord gave it to us. The Lord dished it out. He permitted it. He allowed it. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. I was amazed when I read this passage that God uh, uses the analogy of adversity and affliction and connects it to bread and water. What, what is significant about that, Pastor Jenkins? What is significant is that bread and water are necessities to life. You and I can live and make it without water for a few days, but eventually you're going to need water. Eventually, you're going to need some bread. You're going to need some food. There are necessities to life. And what I hear the Lord saying is, for you to be everything that I want you to be, I can't let you continue to walk down the path of rejection of my, his word and rejection of his ways. I can't let you keep going down that road. You won't become everything I want you to become. So the necessity that you got to have to become everything that God wants you to have, you got to have the bread of adversity and the water of Affliction. It's one of those necessities to life. Adversity and affliction. Adversity means you're put in a narrow tight place. Adversity means you've got opposition. It means that God has allowed tight situations and opponents to come up and rise against you. That's what adversity is. God says you got to have that in your life so you can become everything that I want you to become. Without you, without you having this in your life, you can't be the man or woman of God that I want you to become. So I had to give you the bread of adversity. If I didn't give it to you, you would keep walking down the path, adding sin to sin. You keep walking down the path of rejection of my word and my way, God says. And so I had to introduce into the domain of your life some bread and water that you didn't want to drink. But it's essential. You've got to have adversity and affliction. Affliction means to be in distress, to be in trouble, uh, being to the point that you don't know what to do. Not only are there a few people drinking this bread and drinking this water and eating this bread, a whole world is now. God's trying to get our attention. So he said, I've handed to you the bread of affliction and the water of adversity. I've given to you the bread of adversity, I'm sorry, and the water of affliction. And then he says this, he says, and yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Y'all missed a great spot to say amen. He tells us why he had to give us this bread and this water so that your eyes can see your teachers. God says, I've been trying to teach you and show you, but you wouldn't hear me. And you wouldn't go in the direction I was trying to get you to go. You wouldn't yield to what I wanted you to do. So I had to introduce into the domain of your circumstances this bread and this water. Why? Because I needed you to see the teacher. And that teacher will not be hid in a corner anymore. Your eyes shall finally see your teachers and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, I love this promise. This is a promise. That's my next P, my fourth point is there's a problem, there's a principle, there's a program. And verse 21 gives up, the latter part of verse 20 and verse 21 gives us a promise. And the promise is the teacher won't be hidden anymore, won't be pushed in a corner. You can't ignore it anymore. And he says in verse 21, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. This is the path. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left, You'll have, whatever way you go, it'll be a voice behind you giving the direction, giving an order, shouting out to you to tell you, follow this path, go in this direction. And that's what we need. We need to hear a word from God, not leaning to what the words of the world say, not the wisdom of the world, not the, 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 the guidance of wayward preachers or leaders, 
But instead, we want to listen to the, the one who will tell us what God's truth says. I'm giving God praise today that he made a promise to us that we'll hear the word and we'll have a, we'll have a sense of direction. We'll have a path to go. There is, in fact, a path for us to go. My cry out to you today. Let's hear the word of God. My cry to you today, to my brothers and sisters and all of those you're connected to, you got friends and relatives who don't want to hear the word. Maybe in the midst of this worldwide crisis, their ears are open to hear. The teacher that's been trying to speak to them cannot be hidden anymore. Can't be pushed in a corner. Cannot be ignored anymore. They don't have money. They can't pay their bills. They can't feed their families. There's a level of stress and worry and anxiety. Now they'll hear the teacher. And he says he will hear. And he will respond, this is the way. Will you go in that way? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love us enough to give us some bread and water. Some bread of adversity and waters of affliction. I give you the praise that you introduced and brought this into our life. We repent that we've disregarded your word, that we've added sin to sin from one level of sin to the next, I thank you that you've been gracious and kind to us to give us another chance. I give you praise and thanks in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John, for such a great word. We have been so moved and touched. We serve such a good God. We serve such a big God. Now, what I want us to do, I wonder if everyone can just bow their heads, just there where you are, just close your eyes, just bow your heads, and I want to pray with you. And while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I want to ask you today to give your life to Jesus. And maybe you haven't yet made that decision. You see, because you've got to understand that calling yourself Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. Going to church doesn't mean you're Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't mean you're Christian. The Bible says in John 3 verse 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, you can't make yourself a child of God. You can't, be, you can't uh, uh, just call yourself a child of God. You've got to be born of God to be a child of God. But you say, but Bert, what do you mean? What does this mean? Well, first of all, you're born of your parents that gives you the right to walk the earth. That's born the first time. But secondly, the Bible says in the book of Peter, that when we're born out of God, God comes and places His incorruptible seed, the seed of the Word, within your heart. And that starts to germinate and permeate and starts to change you. You see, that's why out of yourself you cannot change. You can modify your behavior to a certain degree, but you cannot change your heart. You cannot change your nature. You are who you are, but God can change you. If you invite Him into your life, He will transform your life and you will never be the same again. Listen to what I'm saying. He's done it for me and He's done it for countless other children of God. And therefore, I want to encourage you. You might say, well, but how do we do this? What do we need to do? Well, the Bible says in John 1 verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called children of God, those who believe in his name. If you receive Jesus Christ into your life, he will come and change you. You see, God's never going to force himself into your life. He won't do that. You've got to invite him in. And that's why I'm going to give you that opportunity today. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, nobody looking around. If that's you, you say, Pastor Bird, I want to give my life to Jesus. Maybe you've never done it before. Maybe you've done it before, but you've moved away from God. But if that's you, quickly slip up your hand and quickly put it down. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now, keep your eyes closed, heads bowed. I want to ask just one more time because this is a crucial part of the service. Maybe you're thinking, well, you know what? I'm not sure. Maybe I can do this another day. Um, I'll think about it. I'm going to put some time in it. Here's the problem. You see, Jesus says today is the day of salvation. So when you hear the message of salvation, it's critical to come to Him at that stage. You see, there's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day and they don't even know it yet. 
the question is, if you had to die today, is your life right with God? And you might be startled and say, whoa, okay, now you're becoming real. Exactly. You see, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. That challenge you have in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And you might, after this experience and service, think, you know what, uh, I'm going to leave it. And then what happens, the Holy Spirit removes and doesn't speak to you again. And you might never, ever sense that you need God ever in your life again. You might never, ever be challenged the way you challenge today. But one day you will stand before God. That's a fact. One day you will stand before God and you'll say, remember, Remember that day I spoke to you and you made a conscious decision to reject me. And therefore, I don't want you to let this time go by. And while every eye is closed, every head is bowed, no one looking around, and you say, yes, Pastor Bert, I'm saying yes to Jesus. Quickly just slip up your hand and then put it down. There you go, only you see it, and you go down right there you go. Now, just there where you are, we're going to say a prayer together. And I want everybody to pray. Keep your eyes closed. Everybody to pray that no one is embarrassed. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take away the guilt, the shame, the condemnation. Thank you, Lord, that you changed me. You make me a new creation. You place your spirit within me. And as from now, I can say, I am a child of God. Your word says, if I receive you and believe, I can say, I am a child of God. And today, I receive you into my life. Everything that I am, I surrender unto you. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I belong to you. And nothing can snatch me out of your hands because I am your child. And let me pray with you and thank you, Lord, that you do the work in each and every life right now in the name of Jesus. Every curse broken over their lives. Thank you, Lord. Their sins are forgiven. And as from now, they belong to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Isn't that exciting? Well, you now belong to Jesus. You are a child of God. Well, we're going to close, but before we close, just a few things I want to say. First of all, thank you, Pastor John, for that great message. We've been so blessed. And remember, we have life class on Monday with Bert and Shanae. We're teaching life class. If you have not yet done life class, it's critical. This is open to anybody uh, for training. It's important to be trained. So on Monday from 7 to 8, we're doing life class. Make sure that you register. We're doing life class together. And then on Tuesday, we're doing destiny training. Those are for those who have finished life class. We continue with destiny training on, on, on Tuesday. And we're excited that you can join us. And then, of course, you know, Shanae and I, we do devotion every single morning. Please join us every morning from 8 to 8.30, uh, daily devotion with Bert and Shanae. You can join us on uh, my Facebook page, uh, on our, our YouTube channel. And I know that you're going to be blessed every morning from 8 to 8.30. You can join us and you are going to be blessed. And then we'll be back next Sunday, same time, same place, so that God can do something special within your life. Now, I want to pray a blessing over you. Just there we are. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. It's just a sign of surrender. That's all it is. And I'm going to pray God's blessing over you for this week. And Lord, I speak your blessing over each and every person that this week will be a blessed week, that your grace will rest upon their lives. The unmerited, undeserved, uh, unearned favor of God over their lives, whatever they put their hand to will be blessed. Wherever they tread, they shall possess. And Lord, I pray that you grant them peace peace beyond understanding, peace within their hearts, peace within their minds. Lord, that they'll know that you're in control of their lives and whatever is needed for this week is provided for. The health that is needed, the resources that is needed, the wisdom that is needed, the strength that is needed to be able to do what each and every person needs to do. I speak your blessing over every family, over every home. You protect every home. You give your angels charge concerning each and every home and every person. I speak it over you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. 
Life is a journey. Everyone takes one small step to go to the next level. The journey is filled with moments of joy and others filled with pain. Sometimes we can get lost along the way. Life is not how many steps we take. It is the steps we take in the right direction. Today, decide to walk on the right path again. Life class is your opportunity to learn to walk with Jesus and fulfill his purpose for your life. This and much more is Life Class. Every Monday at 7 p.m. with Pastors Bert and Shawnee Pretorius. Destiny Training is a program focused on shaping leaders by equipping them with the skills and tools necessary to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. Through years of experience and constant pursuit of excellence, we have been able to craft an accessible, effective learning process. With solid biblical foundations, Destiny Training prepares leaders to assume the responsibility of impacting not only their own homes, but every home in every community. Join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. with Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius for Destiny Training. Every believer, a leader of leaders.